I'm Dylan Gould. Um, I've uh, known Grant since he was about, since we were both 12. Um, Grant Gamble, oh, this is, uh, this is the one I'd like to share. Um, Grant Gamble was an amazing storyteller. My favorite story that Grant used to tell is the story that I came out of the closet to him. 19 years ago. It's, it's old and dusty because I've heard him tell it about 150 times, exactly the same way every time. I'm not gonna tell it today. It's a story about me, really, but not about Grant. I, I will say that the unconditional love that he showed me that day made it a turning point in my life. I knew, I knew that even the straightest man in the world could love and accept me for who I was, but what really got me when I thought about, about it last night was that I never get to hear him tell that story again. From now on, I have to tell it myself. I should be able to. I've heard it 150 times. <laughs> but I just don't think I can tell it exactly the same way that he did. I'm gonna need help. I hope you all carry his stories with you, but don't just hold them in your hearts, belt them out. Be fearless and shout them to the world exactly like he would 150 more times. I love you, Grant, and I will forever be your faggot. And this one's uh, from Charlie Harlan. I started college at SU in Georgetown, but took a leave of absence when I got pregnant with Allie. After a year-long leave of absence, I transferred to SWT, where I spent my first day overweight, lost, exhausted, and miserable. After learning that I missed the hair audition workshop, I was quietly crying on the lawn outside the theater building. And then I felt a foot gently kick my ass. I, I looked up at a large furry fellow that I vaguely recognized from a morning class. You're really pretty, he said. But I have to say, you wear that smile you had on earlier way better than tears. Okay, bye. <laughs> he walked away, and I stopped crying, mostly out of shock. And that was how I met the incomparable Mr. Gamble. And then, don't know why it keeps coming to mind, but it's a favorite. Sitting on the walkway across the moat one of those days, I had to take Allie to school with me. Grant was alternately pointing out turtles to her and making loud zerbits, mouth farts, if you will, on my shoulder. Two cute girls walk by just as he lets one rip right between my shoulder blades. <laughs> Both girls look up in response to the sound, Grant shrugs, and points at my innocent two-year-old <laughs> as if she were the culprit. The instant one of those girls wrinkled her brow and laughed a bit, Grant snatched Allie into a protective hug, covering her ears. For God's sake, shush yourself before you scar the poor thing for life. I laughed so hard I may have peed myself just a little bit. This uh, story is from Scott Edwards. You know, Grant, it's hard to come up with a perfect story for you, man. There's a bit of a worry that it won't mean as much once it's said out loud. But you'd just tell me to get it out there and we'd still talk about it. There's a bit of a worry that I'll have the details wrong and Jones will call me out in front of everyone. But then I'd hear that laugh again, so it'd be worth it. And there's more than a bit of worry that the best stories probably shouldn't be told in polite company. But that really never stopped us before. What I can promise you, I don't have any worry about, is that we all love each other with a love that can be as fierce and abrasive as it is gentle and comforting. I knew freshman year that we were a special tribe, but I never imagined how rare a breed we were. It wasn't a company forced 
honest by birth or circumstance, it was a company we chose. And I don't mean we chose each other as friends in college, I mean we chose to come into this life, into the families and circumstances and situations that we all did, knowing that somewhere around 98, there was a rendezvous point in a red brick theater by the river in Texas. And I used to think that we all came here to learn some great life lesson together and how lucky we were to have found each other in this lifetime. But the further away I get from those late night Taco Cabana runs, the more I realize that we had already learned the greatest lesson a lifetimes ago. We didn't meet up in this life to learn it together. We met up to remind ourselves how lucky we are to already know it. Because that lesson is what gets us through everything. Everything else this crazy world might throw at us. Just love. Love life, love ourselves, love each other. You knew this, Grant. You reminded us with every bear hug, every sly grin, every guffaw, every kind word, and every simple wisdom that would just pop out of your mouth when I least expected it. And I'm not going to lie. I'm a little pissed that you're taking this moment to remind me again. But I hear you, man, and I love you. And I know we're all so glad to know you love us. Um, and uh, this selection's from Judy Gould. Our family has known the, Gran uh, the Gamble family for the past 20 to 25 years. Anne was our daughter Madeline's most favorite teacher ever, and Grant was one of our son Dylan's best friends since junior high. For the past school year, I have had the distinct pleasure of being one of Madison's preschool teachers. I can tell you firsthand that Maddie and Morgan are children who experience joy in almost every moment. Madison and Morgan would burst into the classroom exhibiting unabated enthusiasm and exuberance. Maddie would get right down to work playing and often commanding what was to, what was to be played and how it was to be played. <laughs> She and her sister both possess that singularity of purpose and perseverance that we in the preschool world call leadership qualities. <laughs> <laughs> Madison would often chatter happily at, uh, of her life at home, special occasions, visits to Aunt Allie or Uncle Travis, a day to be spent with Meg. It was obvious that love and laughter flow freely at home. I got a particular kick out of Maddie's comments about the movies, uh, now old by today's standards, Jumanji and The Never-Ending Story, both favorites of our kids too back in the day. But today it is this picture I want to leave you with. It is dismissal time at preschool and the class members are waiting pickup. If Grant was the designated pickup person, he had only to darken the doorway and Maddie would sprout wings and fairly fly across the classroom, leap up and into her daddy's arms with a show of welcome that would warm your heart. And it is, and that is an image of Madison and her dad that I will treasure for years to come. And this one is from Ryan Griffith. I could write a novel about what Grant meant to me, all of the many crazy memories I have of our time together, and how he shaped and changed my life. Grant was just one of those uniquely profound people that could connect with almost anyone instantly in a way that would stick with them forever. Lots of cliches come to mind when trying to describe Grant, shooting star, bigger than life, life of the party. None really fit right, though, because there was nothing cliche about Grant. He was like a giant, hairy, crudely painted rocket ship that was on fire, flying higher and faster and louder than most people were comfortable with. Some turned away at the mere sight and sound of him, but those of us that chose to latch on to him for a while were taken on the ride of a lifetime. You never knew what you would see or do with him, who you might meet, whether you would land safely at the end of the journey or if everything might explode in your face. All you knew 
was that you didn't want to miss it and that you'd never be the same when you got back. So you trusted him to lead the way and whether things were good or bad, they were uh, epically intense and you were never left disappointed by a lackluster experience. Even if all you did was sit on a couch together, it felt like you were going somewhere, like something was happening that was changing the way you saw the world, that you were growing. He was the most completely open person I have ever or will ever have known. His passion for crudeness was as huge as his passion for beauty. Nothing in him was ever held back or sugar-coated. It all came out with the same fiery gusto. The dark was somehow just as bright as the light, and it all shocked and amazed me every single time. He spoke, laughed, cried, sang, loved, and lived harder and more fully than I ever knew could be possible. He pushed you and tested your boundaries. He celebrated you and enjoyed you with such confidence and such lack of fear, it almost seemed unreal at times. Whatever you did, he was your biggest fan. He wanted to let everyone else hear your song, watch your play, see your art, know your story. He must have played his brother Travis's CD for me about 10,000 times, and he was just as excited to share it the last time as he was the first. He was more proud of you for being you than any of us could ever be for ourselves. He loved you more than you could ever realize or understand, even if he, w he just met you minutes ago. He lived with no filter and no boundaries. He forever changed the person I am and will always be. He showed me what life can be if you are willing and able to put aside fear and doubt and self-consciousness. I will always think of him when these negative parts of myself begin to creep in and I will always try to overcome him like he could with no effort whatsoever. I'll never be anywhere near him in that regard, but I'll be a better me just by trying. I love you, big guy. And though my heart is broken now, I cherish your life and find great joy in seeing the big Afro-infused mark you left on so many lives. To all of his friends and family, I weep for your loss, as I do for my own. I smile for your joy of having known and loved him, as I did. Thank you. I am Matt Thurston. I was uh, very close with Grant during high school and after. Um, and the first thing that I want to read for you is something that was uh, sent to me and shared by another friend of ours, Jameson Maher, who couldn't be here today, uh, but who also knew Grant since childhood, who also just texted me that my balls are hanging out. So if that's true, I apologize. <laughs> Where's the, thanks, Jimmy. <laughs> this is from Jameson. <clears throat> Grant has been my friend and a source of joy for the great majority of my life. I knew him best and was closest to him during our formative elementary school years. So it is that in processing his loss, uh, my mind wanders unbidden to early memories, singular, specific memories that shape my sense of humor my imagination, and my perspective on the world. Memories which harken back to the Ghostbusters 2 era. It surprises me to realize to what extent our young lives and early sensibilities were integrated and influenced each other, well, on my end at least. And it occurs to me I would not and could not be the person I am without the benefit of knowing Grant. For instance, I remember the first time I met Grant we were the last two minnows in a grade level wide game of sharks and minnows. I can remember his t-shirt, it was, it was a blue GoBots t-shirt, or maybe it was a Transformers t-shirt, but I'm pretty sure it was a GoBots t-shirt. 
and a sea of hideous, lice-ridden seven-year-olds waited, frothing at the mouth, I am reminded of a particularly rabid Carrie Madison, to devour us once we crossed the jump rope border and made for the opposite end of the field. We briefly acknowledged the hopeless circumstances and exchanged melodramatic once more into the breach, fist in the air gestures, and then plunged to our certain demise into the fray. Now it seems that there, <coughs> excuse me, it seems that there's something significant about this, not something symbolic or any dumb shit like that, but significant, something about attacking the oncoming tide the inclination to run into the storm, established an important aspect of my character and cemented a bond which would endure as we both followed very different but often intersecting life paths. This I know. Grant's friendship does endure. And additionally, it's communicable. It's a force which diffuses and deflects cynicism and often leads to loving others by extension. I've not had the privilege to meet Madison and Morgan, but it's clear that they are wonderful little people, and Grant's essence and intellect will live on through his girls, and they will be loved and cared for by those who loved and cared for Grant. You are now and will forever be missed. Uh, and now I'd like to, to share a few memories of my own of Grant. I'll be brief. <laughs> Everybody's talking about, excuse me, talking about how great Grant was. Grant, and Grant was. He was awesome. But I decided to be contrary and share a story about a time that Grant sucked. <laughs> yeah. Don't thank me yet. Because I tried really hard to think of one, and I couldn't. Oh, don't get me wrong. Oh, Grant could piss me off. And did. But most often when Grant pissed me off is because he was challenging my comfortable assumptions. So I wanted to think of a story that would uh, not be inappropriate. <laughs> and that's hard. But I was talking to Travis and to Jason Rainey the other night and it occurred to me that the story I was telling them was perfectly indicative of my relationship with Grant. Grant when I was in high school, I, and Dad, I'm going to have to ask you to earmuff it for me in a minute. When I was in high school, I drove an Oldsmobile Bravada that was actually owned by my father, but he loaned it to me. And Grant and I would take my Bravada at least once a week to, uh, to the Bennigans on Central Drive. And we would always order the same thing. We would always get buffalo wings with an extra shot of Bennigan's zesty winger sauce. And we would eat the buffalo wings and we would drink our drinks. And then at the very end of the night before we left Bennigan's, we would do a shot of zesty winger sauce. <laughs> Thanks, Grant, for the ulcer. <laughs> we, uh, this, this, it sort of became a, a ritual that we called getting zesty. <laughs> and we would get zesty about once a week, at least. Now one. One particular night, we got zesty and, uh, and jumped in my bravada and decided to go check out what was in the parking lot behind the big bank building right across Central Drive. And it turns out, not much. And, it, and we learned some very important lessons in that parking lot. The first is that it's really difficult to do donuts in an all-wheel drive vehicle. And the second is that when you can't do donuts in the parking lot and there's not much else, the thrill pales quickly. And it did, and so we decided, to, uh, we decided to take off. But you can't, it was Grant, and we were zesty, so you can't just mildly nose out into traffic. We had to take off at escape velocity. So I tried, and I got the bravada up. This is the part where you're gonna wanna earmuff it, Dad. I got up to 30, maybe 40 miles an hour in a parking lot, and I saw coming up ahead, it's dark and there's not many lights, so I see coming up ahead in the headlights, what I only realize when it's far too late to do anything about it is not just a curb, but a curb with a three and a half foot drop on the other side. <laughs> and there's a brief moment of indecision in which I look at Grant and I'm thinking about trying to turn, the, you know, hit the brakes and turn away and Grant goes, PUNCH IT! So 
so I punched it. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that in real life, we did not go into epic heroic slow motion. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that in real life, the theme to the greatest American hero did not start playing. And I'm pretty sure that we did not share a long and soulful eye contact <laughs> and hold hands as we drove off the cliff, <laughs> flying to our destiny. But that's how I remember it. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that not every moment I ever spent with Grant felt like the climax to an 80s action movie. But that's how I remember it. And it's going to be hard to move past the climax into the denouement, mostly because it's hard to pronounce. <laughs> but it'll be easier knowing that Grant is still around and that Grant's spirit, that challenging spirit that never let you stop, that never let you turn away, that always made you punch it, that spirit will not will not go gently into that good night. We know Grant. It will go stomping and shouting and singing, and we can all stomp and shout and sing along. And so, Grant, I'm not going to say goodbye, but I am going to say thank you for teaching me so many things and never letting me stop and always making me punch it, but mostly for teaching me that it's okay to be a fat dude and you can still be sexy. <laughs> thank you, Grant. And thank you all. Thank you, Travis and Ann and Allie and Meg and everybody who went into the formation of such a beast of challenging amazingness. And thank you all for letting me speak. Check one, two. Hello, everybody. I am uh, Aaron Brock. I was deemed Aaron Brock by uh, Mr. Grantley, my brother. He was the first man that I made friends with whenever I went to college. I was lucky enough to be his roommate. During that time that Grant and I were friends, I started dabbling in songwriting. And I wrote this song that I'm pretty sure all of our close friends have heard many of times because he would love to play it over and over. And after I wrote this song, the first person that I, of course, brought it to was Grant, since that's easy to take him to because he always loves everything you do. And I played this song for Grant and I will quote what he says with gesture and everything. After I got finished with the song, I look over at him and he goes, Airbrock, that was effing awesome. <laughs> with tears rolling down his face. And I say to him, are you crying from the, or the song? And he says, both. <laughs> uh. 
He also at one time asked me one thing about this song, to do one thing for him, so that's what I'm doing now. Yes. I'm going to try it back the way it was written. Sorry, I have a sore throat today, so I was trying not to do it. Have you... Pardon me for the technical difficulty. So cold. Have you been down the broken road? Oh, the leads up to a future road. Yeah. 
back your beer. Won't you cry no more tears? Let's make it back. Oh, see. Oh, the goodness of man will come. I love you, brother.
Matter.